Let me just make sure this is working. Android user. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So connection's a little wonky. But here. All right, folks. So the thing that's really cool about Instagram is that it makes sharing photos socially really fast and really easy. So I just took this photo, and if you take a look on my Facebook account now, uh, let's reload that. I think, uh, close out of that, should come up here. Uh, reload Flickr, reload Tumblr. <laughs> Reload Foursquare, reload Twitter. Um, so let's see how many came through on. Sometimes it takes a second to go through with the connection. But, and are we on Wi-Fi? We are. So, pretty much anything that I want to share, any picture that I want to take, um, the thing that's really cool about Instagram is that it's really adaptable and it's really simple. Um, and I'm going to show you the interface in a second, but pretty much there are about five buttons. You, it's not something that you can do a million different things with, but for what it's good at, which is photo, taking photos, editing them quickly, making them look pretty cool, and then sharing them with everyone you know and lots of people you don't, um, it is absolutely, as far as I'm concerned, the be all end all of simple solutions. It's nice that it's designed, I mean, if you take a look at this, um, so it's designed for the phone. It runs on the iPad too, um, but it's pretty much meant to be something that you can do with one hand without spending too much time poking around at it. Let me see if I can get this connection working. <sighs> it is. Let's see. Oh, iPad, come on. Hmm. Yeah, it was. Is the projector up? The projector's on. There we go. There's a PC. And let's see if I can get the iPad. Oh, heart rending. All right, well, while, while Dave fiddles with it, um, so Instagram connects by default with um, my Facebook account. Uh, let's see if that went through. It connects to my Flickr account. Uh, this is an Instagram that I took a little bit earlier today in the Media Lab. Um, it works with Foursquare for check-ins, and it tweets your photos all at the same time. Um, it also works as a photo hosting service. So if you want to just have a repository of your personal photos, um, you can keep them all on Instagram, and later on you can email links to those photos to people, um, or even just keep a sort of private archive for your own use. But really what's, what it works best for is actually the, uh, the sharing aspect. Um, they also actually enable you to get prints done of your photos um, pretty easily, which is cool. Um, so let's take a look. Is there, let me just give one more shot to getting the iPad to actually show you what I'm doing here. Yeah, all right. Um, so the interface is super simple. Um, 
And oh, the Instagram app is free. So if any of you have smartphones, you could even download it right now um, and add me on Instagram, which would be just the coolest thing in the world. Um, so pretty much the way that this works, I'm not going to pick it up because it'll mess with it, but I'll show you. It can also edit photos that you've taken earlier. So I'm going to show you how that function works. Um, so for example, let's take a look. Something good. Ah, here's Dave. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right off the bat, you can scale it in or out. Yeah. Um, and so because Instagram is always, uh, it emulates the classic uh, square format photography, like 120 millimeter film, which, you know, if you ever get a chance to shoot actual 120 millimeter, it's a dream. Um, I'm, I'm a photographer by training. Um, but Instagram, you know, whereas shooting 120 millimeter film will take hours and hours and then weeks and weeks of developing and editing, Instagram is easy. So I'm going to choose my photo here. So this is, this is sort of your command center for all of the different things you can do. Um, and the thing that Instagram is most known for is the different filters that you can apply to add sort of retro photo effects. Um, so let's check out this one. This one's super cool. Um, so you can add photo effects really easily. Um, and you can switch between them and sort of check out what your photo is going to look like. Um, you can also, you'll see that it, it sort of adds this, depending on the style you're using, it can add this sort of print outline of it. But you can also take that off and just use the colorization, um, which is really nice. Now, it also has the ability to give you um, selective focus effects. So like tilt shift photography, um, or uh, what's the other one? The one where it makes things look tiny? Oh yeah, so um, if you use this little button up here, you can select different sort of selective focus areas. So what that means is if I do this, so now it's kind of got vignetting, um, which makes it look as though I've sort of selectively focused on Dave. Um, you can also use a sort of a linear pattern, so you can make it look, you know, as if you're just, uh, this works really well for if you have a photo that's framed with a foreground, a midground, and a background. Um, you can selectively focus just on the foreground and make it look like you're using a wide aperture lens, which normally is going to, you know, set you back of a several hundred bucks, but this is a little bit easier. Um, and once, oh, and you can also just uh, adjust the color levels automatically using this little button in the corner. So a lot of times with, especially with camera phones, you wind up shooting in places that are a little bit darker than you'd like. Um, but this can clean up a lot of the, uh, the shortcomings of shooting on a camera phone, which is really cool. Um, it's because it's already throwing sort of color filters on that yeah. it's not as sensitive to that so it's pretty much just going to sort of you know it's it's more fire and forget and less because and that's the thing is that I'm also a heavy Photoshop user and everything that I'm doing here is something that I could do in Photoshop too but the difference is it would take a lot more time I'd have to sit down and edit it you get more precise control with something like Photoshop but Instagram is much more about just being able to grab a photo on the fly and throw it out into the world. Um, so you lose some of that precision for sure. But once you're ready to share it, um, there are a few different things here that are pretty, pretty cool. Um, because Instagram is social, um, hashtags work really well. So uh, let's hashtag this. Oh, definitely. So Dave at the lab. Whoop. And then some of the things that are really cool um, is that this has geotagging functions built in. So what that means is that this can detect where we are automatically. And just by clicking on this, this shows us a lot of different options that are right around us. Um, I'm going to select the Weigel Information Commons because that's where we are. Um, and then I can also choose any of the social media services that I've connected, um, and I can share it on all of them. 
So this is something where you need to, when you first sign into Instagram, the first time you go to share one of these photos, you can pick which services you want to be able to use and it'll just take your login information for each of those. It keeps them secure and it, you know, it hooks into the APIs of each of these sites very nicely. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the security issues with sharing your password, but it does get those photos conveyed right over to all of these sites or whichever ones you use. Um, and Foursquare uh, is what handles the mapping, I believe. So um, I needed to enable the geolocation on Foursquare in order to get this going. But let's, let's take a look at what happens when I share this. So it'll process. There it is. And now I can take a look. If it didn't make it onto any of my services before and I changed my mind, I can always share it or email it later. So I can add it to a service like Flickr or Facebook. Uh, you can always add things from your feed later on. Um, oh, and so someone has already liked this photo. So this is the social activity tab. This tells you who's liking your photos, who started following you, that's me. Um, it keeps track of all of the activity that you've had so you can sort of examine your entire career as an Instagram celebrity. <laughs> so let's take a per uh, look at this person who's liked our photo. So this is someone called Sean Zam. And what, so this is his profile. So the sort of the way that Instagram works is you can easily go through someone's entire photo history just by sort of cruising through it. Check out all the different stuff that this Sean Zam fellow has done. I think Sean Zam is pretty cool. So I'm going to follow him. And now whenever I go to my home page, which I'll show you in a second, anything that he updates, I'll see that. And anything that anyone who you follow shares um, will automatically come up. Um, so that's pretty powerful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys that in, in one sec. I just want to show you one other thing that's cool. This is Sean Zam's photo map. So let's take a look at where wow. Sean Zam takes pictures. So I guess Sean Zam's in Philadelphia. He's in New York. He's in Trenton. He's all over the place. A lot of activity in Philly. So let's take a look at those. Yeah, so the geotagging is incredibly cool. Um, I'm really keen on it. Um, so it looks like he, you know, he went up to North Philly and got some sausages. Uh, he went out by the water. Um, he was looking at jewelers. Um, this is great. And this is a really fun way to actually, for me, to experience the city of Philadelphia um, and wherever else you are. Um, and so the mapping service, this works. You can find people by geotags just looking around and just see what other people saw in the city you're in or on campus. Yeah, it's not on, it's so you can you can post photos without geotagging if you like, mm -hmm. but it's really easy to choose to geotag them. Um, really? Well, let me check. Yeah, Twitter's going to stop. Instagram's not going to let their pictures be shown on Twitter anymore. Oh, really? Or at least that's what they last said. Well, this one's still working for now. Ha ha, take that, Twitter. Um, OK, so this is something, this may not last, but for now it works really well. And even if Twitter tries to block it, I don't think they could stop you from sharing the URL of one of your, one of your Instagram. So you could always just post them on Twitter the more roundabout way. Um, but back to Instagram. Um, so in terms of finding other people to follow, um, one thing that I do a lot is if I've started following someone and I think their photos are interesting, I take a look at who they're interested in. And so really easily you can see what their interests are. And so you can follow sort of through chains of people that way, you know, sort of doing that whole six degrees kind of thing. Um, but the other way that you can find people is through the Explore tab. Um, now by default, it just sort of shows you a, kind of a zeitgeist view of interesting things that are happening on Instagram, what's popular. Um, so I guess people like dogs and shoes. You're going to find a lot of cats and a lot of food on Instagram. Um, if you take a look at mine, the first six photos are all of my cat. Um, 
But you can also look for people. So if I'm interested in the U University of Pennsylvania, I think if I search for U of Penn. So here's the university. And I can click on them. I can see what sort of photos they're sharing. Um, and I can follow them. It'll look good. Um, I can also see who else the University of Penn follows. So these are a lot of different uh, academic institutions, Twitter or uh, Instagrams. Um, so you can hook right into that community that way. And that's a really powerful way of finding sort of communities of Instagram users is just sort of find someone who's going to be high up on the food chain and then see what they follow. Because usually whoever they follow is going to be fairly authoritative. Um, what else? Oh, you can also search by tags. So remember I hashtag gadget day before? So, huh. So these are, the, these are things that have been tagged gadget day. What's, what's going on there? They're previous gadget days. Well, yeah, that's. They happen to be using the same hashtag. Go figure. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a surprise factor, which I really dig. Um, but if I search for the hashtag, hashtag UPen, for example, um, this really quickly just gives you pretty much anyone who's wandering around here just what they're doing at Penn, what they're seeing. So this is a really nice photo. I think it's beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to like it. And now that'll show up for them. They'll get a little message saying that we like their photo. Um, and maybe if we're lucky, they'll follow us and like all of our photos. Um, not obligatory, but pretty cool. Um, so that makes it like this is this is something that's really cool um, is just being able to see what's going on at a place and pretty much for whatever you're interested in there are going to be millions uh, so many people are using it now that there are going to be millions of results for I mean for every tag that I looked for I got some pretty good stuff now of course there's the the home screen which is a nice little dashboard this shows me so this shows my photos but it also shows photos like this is my personal account. So this will show photos that I've taken and posted. So piles of guitars and funny posters and little cousin Kai. Um, so it lets you, so sort of this dashboard function lets you keep track of everyone you're following really easily. Um, and that's pretty cool. And last but not least, of course, there's the importance of maintaining your uh, social media brand identity, which you can accomplish easily through the profile page. And this is actually something most of Instagram happens in the app. There's not a lot of web-based backend. So you don't really need to use the Instagram site on your computer at all. And there's not much you can do. But one thing you can do is you can edit your profile through the computer. That's pretty much it for what you can do outside of the app. Um, but so for example, if you have a really good bio that's already written up, it might be easier to paste that using your computer. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to managing your identity. You know, and if you have a photo that you're not crazy about, you can always go ahead and take it off. But Dave is not so lucky. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my 50,000 feet up view of Instagram. So if you delete a photo, is it still out there somewhere or it's um, gone? The, the okay. links, so the links will still exist from Twitter, but it won't be posted on Twitter. I think it will post to Facebook. So you would have to also, because Facebook bought Instagram for a billion dollars, oh. um, <laughs> the, it actually integrates really tightly with their API. So you would actually want to just make sure that you go and check your other sites and make sure, because it, it'll actually send the file, send the photo file to some of those other sites. So you'd want to make sure to clean it up. Of course, as with anything social media, once something goes out, anyone could copy it, anyone could save it. So, you know, I'm always super careful. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's better for going out than coming in. Um, but, yeah. Sure. So a hashtag pretty much, like if I want to describe this, 
Um, you know, I wouldn't want necessarily every single word in my description to be searchable just because, like, you know, this is a picture of me and Dave after we got a cup of coffee, say. You know, people searching for coffee would be terribly, well, they'd probably be thrilled to find this, but it might be not what they're really looking for. So if you put a little hash marker before a word or before a phrase that you've conjoined into one textual unit, um, that will become a hashtag. And those are what's searchable um, when you go into the search app. So I've, I've just been hashtagged. Um, this is Dave. And I'm going to comment. And now we have discourse going. And so you can really easily engage with your followers right across the room. So if I go in there and search on uh, Nick teaching, I'm not going to find this picture, but if I search on the hashtag, I would. Yeah, if you search for gadget tag, that, that's what would come up. Yes, you can. Yeah, I but think. But if I search for David Toth or whatever that was, I would also find it, right? Um, yeah, you would. If you searched for the user David Talk, you would come up. And that hashtag would also have gone into your Twitter. Um, yes, I, I believe that also shows up. Let me just double check. Yeah. So, let's take a look at that. So this also got tagged Gadget Day. And if I click on that tag, and I look for all tweets, well, it looks like Dave didn't tweet my photo, so I got lucky. Um, but so this will show you. And so that's, that's one of the things that's cool about hashtags, is you can link across social media systems. And everywhere you look for the tag Gadget Day, uh, different related things will come up. And we're going to be making a story five, which is why we're using the Gadget Day tag. And if you're not familiar with it, it'll be up on our site. Now, the hashtag. Someone else can create the same name so that we can run into clashes. Right? People can hijack their hashtag and do things with it if you don't want them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's, and that's, that's the thing about it is because it's open to the web, anyone can, anyone can pretty much say anything and use those hashtags. So in that case, it usually just becomes a matter of making sure that you're putting out good enough and enough content that the noise is not able to overwhelm you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the Storify that you do, is pick out just the ones you want to keep. So you can delete the ones that don't. Where's the print? Oh, um, so that's uh, Insta Canvas. Um, so let me just show you that real quick. Well, are you taking photos in Instagram? You're not taking a photo in this one, right? Oh, you can, yeah. Um, right from with, so let me, let me actually do that, just a quick demo of that. To, okay, let's make sure it doesn't get disconnected. And so what's cool about it is you can actually apply the filters, the same filters that I was using right as you're editing or right as you're shooting yeah so you can see ahead of time and compose for the light settings that you're using the color profile you're using so if i just want to highlight anu out here look at that and look there's the camera hmm yeah yeah, yeah, and that's that's something that's actually really impressive for me because I've been shooting digital for a long time too. Is being able to do enough video processing to be able to display this sort of thing live mm -hmm. is something that you know ten years ago would not have been possible. Um, it's it's you know computationally pretty impressive, um, but you know an iPad or pretty much any smartphone can handle this task no problem. <laughs> 